What if I told you the way you're taking creatine is completely wrong? Stick with me because in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you why that trusty five gram scoop might be underserving some of you and why a double scoop is pure overkill for most of you and how to dial that dose so you stop wasting money or missing gains ever again. Last time we talked, I walked you through the creatine fundamentals. Plain monohydrate, three to five grams a day, slam it into a post-workout shake, call it good. That remains the starting line. Consider today the advanced settings menu, the stuff you only bother to tweak when the default mode no longer fits. So creatine is still one of the most reliable legal performance enhancers in sports nutrition. It tops off your muscle phosphocreatine stores. It lets you regenerate ATP faster, and it helps you crank out an extra rep or two. And bonus, it may cushion your neurons during cognitively brutal tasks like sleep deprivation or even concussion. That's the magic. The catch, your muscles behave like a sponge. Once they're soaked, extra water just drips straight through. And it's the same with creatine. You can pour 20 grams down your throat, but once your intramuscular tank is maxed out, the surplus gets converted to creatinine and flushed out. That's why the five gram maintenance script was born. For most mid-sized humans, it offsets the one to two gram daily breakdown and keeps the tank full. But, and here's the nuance, people are not clones. Your body size, baseline diet, training tempo, and even acute brain injuries can all bend to the right dose. Ignoring those variables is like handing everyone the same shoe size because, hey, we're all bipedal. But it makes no sense when you say it out loud, right? So myth number one, more creatine equals more muscle. Wrong. After saturation, performance flatlines whether you take 5 grams or 15. In fact, a 2024 meta-analysis out of the University of Sao Paulo compared low-dose and high-dose protocols in lifters. And what they found is that there's no statistically significant difference in one rep max strength once both groups had six weeks under their belt. Myth number two, 10 grams a day will wreck your kidneys. Also wrong. In a five-year net PD LS1 trial, 10 grams daily in Parkinson's patients, renal marker stayed stable. Serum creatinine rises, sure, but that's just the measurement artifact. Your filtration rate stays normal. In myth number three, everybody does fine on five grams. This is the comfortable lie. It's true for the middle of the bell curve, but step to either tail and the dose becomes either deficient or excessive. A 260 pound strongman, underdosed. A 110 pound gymnast in a weight class sport, possibly overdosed once she's fully loaded. Creatine is cheap, but that isn't a reason to be sloppy. Now let's do an edge case deep dive. Who might need more, less, or none? Let's break down six categories, each with a practical story. So category one, the giant athlete. Picture Noah, a 125 kilogram rugby prop. He tried the classic five gram plan, plateaued and wondered why his post-workout scoop wasn't doing much. Simple, his larger muscle mass leaves extra empty shelf space. At 0.1 grams per kilogram, Noah really needs about 12 -ish grams a day to keep his stores full. And when he grudgingly doubled his intake, split breakfast and dinner, he regained that pop in his scrums within two weeks. Category two, the deadline sprinter. Jen is a competitive powerlifter. She discovers her meet has been rescheduled two weeks earlier. No time for the four week, five gram saturation curve. She could load at 20 grams a day and risk GI drama, or she can meet halfway at 10 grams daily, split doses, and reach full saturation in roughly 14 days with minimal bathroom emergencies. That's the real world utility of a temporary double scoop. Category three, plant-based athletes. Alex is a vegan endurance cyclist. Meatless diets sit about 15% lower in baseline muscle creatine, and that deficit hampers repeated sprint surges on hills. Research from the University of Sydney showed vegans respond almost twice as strongly to supplementation, provided they load aggressively. So Alex goes 10 grams for 10 days, then five grams. The results? Hill repeats feel less like a lactate death march and recovery HR drops quicker. Category four, older adults in a new lifting block. So 65 year old Maria just started resistance training to fight sarcopenia. Aging muscles don't suck up creatine quite as efficiently and Maria eats less red meat than she did 30 years ago. An eight gram daily dose in her first six weeks yields about a 5% bump in leg press strength versus the usual five gram protocol in Kandau's 2023 study on seniors. After that, she can coast on five grams, mission accomplished. Category five, acute brain energy crisis. So remember the 2006 Sacolaris pediatric TBI study? Kids with severe head trauma got 0.4 grams per kilogram, roughly 20 grams each day for six months. 
They showed shorter hospital stays and faster cognitive recovery. Now, nobody is recommending that for healthy teens, but if you run a sports medicine clinic, knowing that protocol saves lives. Same principle applies to military medics using high-dose creatine for blast injuries. And category six, the elusive non-responder. So Scott lifts, he logs, and he notices zero change in strength, weight, or even intramuscular creatine on MRI spectroscopy follow-up. He is the unlucky sub-5% whose transporters are stingy. Doubling his dose to 10 grams for eight weeks nudges the saturation up by 10%, finally translating to tangible gains. Without that individualized tweak, he would have written the supplement off as snake oil. So why is it more automatically better? So the first limiter, wallet fatigue. Doubling your dose roughly doubles your annual cost. Creatine is cheap, but not free. That extra money could upgrade your protein quality or fund mobility sessions. Second limiter, lab confusion. If you're on 10 grams, tell your doctor. Many clinicians still equate elevated serum creatinine with renal decline. A simple heads up avoids unnecessary nephrology referrals and anxiety. And the third limiter, water weight. So an extra half kilo of intracellular water might help leverages in a deadlift, but it pushes you perilously close to weigh-in limit if you're a fighter. On the endurance side, extra mass turns into free payload on up every hill. Ask cyclists, watts per kilo is everything. And the fourth limiter, gut roulette. Slam 10 grams on an empty stomach and you feel like you swallowed a garden hose. Split it, mix thoroughly, maybe pair with carbohydrates. That's how you keep the osmotic dump from happening. Now it's time to get tactical. I'm gonna give you a menu. You pick the line that matches your life. Example A, standard human, standard goals. Stick to just three to five grams a day, anytime. Stir it into lukewarm water, coffee, yogurt, it doesn't matter, just be consistent. Example B, the mass monsters. Use the 0.1 grams per kilogram rule. 12 grams for a 120 kilo lifter, split AM and PM, no loading needed. Maintenance dose alone covers breakdown losses. Example C, the plant-based jumpstart. 10 to 15 grams daily for five to 10 days. Then slide back to five. Side bonus, because vegans often lack B vitamin rich meat, pair creatine with a B12 supplement and monitor iron. Example D, the senior strength sprint. You want eight to 10 grams for the first six weeks of a brand new resistance phase, then five grams. That higher front load breaks through anabolic resistance, after which standard maintenance suffices. Example E, the time crunch athlete. 10 grams daily, split in two for 14 days if you skipped a formal loading phase. You'll be 90% saturated by meat day without the full 20 gram GI gamble. Example F, clinical brain recovery. 20 to 30 grams per day for seven days under medical supervision, then taper to five grams. This is not a home experiment. This is ICU protocol territory. And example G, the true non-responder. So these patients wanna double their current dose for six to eight weeks, then retest muscle creatine or simply track performance metrics. And if nothing changes, creatine may just not be your supplement. Save your cash. And as far as timing, honestly, when you take it matters less than if you remember to take it. That said, Pairing creatine with a carb protein meal like post-lift oatmeal plus whey can help to bump insulin and nudge creatine into muscle cells. Small edge, easy habit. And next up is hydration. So you want to drink an extra glass or two of water. Creatine pulls water into cells. So staying topped up keeps plasma volume happy, especially in hot climates or two a day training blocks. And as far as stacking, creatine stacks beautifully with caffeine, beta alanine or electrolytes. Just avoid mega doses of calcium at the same time. Calcium reduces creatine solubility. If you love milkshakes, dissolve your creatine fully in water first, then pour it into the shake, problem solved. And as far as lab work, if you're bumping above five grams, plant routine blood labs every six months and keep that baseline kidney panel on file. It isn't totally mandatory, but it disarms skeptics fast. And lastly, side effects, 90% of users get nothing worse than a scale bump. If bloating bothers you, micronized creatine can reduce grit and GI issues, or take smaller two gram sips throughout the day. So what are the final takeaways? Five grams is still evidence-based for most lifters, students, and longevity-minded adults. 10 grams is safe, but situational. It's ideal for giants, vegans wrapping up, seniors in a new program, or athletes racing a saturation deadline. 20 grams plus, it's strictly clinical. Brain trauma, concussion research, or the rare transporter mutant. An extra dose equals extra dollars, extra water weight, and potentially extra lab confusion. Calculate whether that trade makes sense for you. 
And lastly, creatine never replaces training quality, sleep, or adequate protein. It multiplies effort. It doesn't manufacture effort. So are you taking creatine wrong? Maybe, maybe not. But now you've got the roadmap to figure out. Run the numbers, pick your route, and scoop with purpose. And as always, I appreciate you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.